David Aram is an artist and uh, a writer. He's somebody who is very productive and whose recent work is very much relevant. So the word retrospective should not make us think that it is predominantly a historical exhibition. That is not the case. We have many works from very recent years. But the ambition is to show his development and also how much in his oeuvre was there already from the beginning. Jimmy Durham is somebody who has always had a very strong vision about why he is an artist and what he wants to achieve. He doesn't make art about art. He doesn't make self-referential art. There's even a piece by him saying, I will make no more self-referential art. Everybody in Europe wants to say about art, what does it mean? And nobody thinks that about music. Nobody says about music, what does it mean? <laughs> we already know what it means. It means what it is. That's the way art ought to be. We are the only animals who do music. When coyotes sing, they're not really singing. They're doing something else. We are the people with music. We're trapped in music the same way we are trapped in architecture and speech and language. I love cities and I wouldn't live anywhere but a city, but they're, they're entirely too strange, huh? They don't need to be as strange as they are. I think it's uh, not at all pretentious to say that Jimmy Durham is a thinker. When you walk through the exhibition, you of course realize that this is one mind speaking to you who is concerned with things and these things don't go away and they're not resolved and they come back in a different shape. That of course you understand and feel, but you're also struck by how different um, the work from one period of his life can be from the work of another period of his life. Here you see the screws, but down here you don't see anything. So that's true. More or less true. <laughs> <laughs> I made Cortez and Malinchi both in Mexico, except uh, half of Cortez's body is Antwerpian. <laughs> because uh, in those days, I had no money. I lived in a poor part of Mexico. And every time I, every time I made something to get a show someplace else, I had two great big suitcases and I put everything in the suitcases. And that's why Malinchi is just a head, because I couldn't get anything else in a suitcase. <laughs> so then when she got to Antwerp, by then she had feet and legs, because I had a little more money and uh, the curators in Antwerp had enough money to ship things. <laughs> so I made Cortez a body and the rest of his heavy body I found in Antwerp or Belgium. <laughs> I always like seeing them because I, I like seeing all of my old work. I'm never very judgmental or critical. <laughs> I'm very soft on myself. I like remembering the days and nights working. And those two especially I remember. It's very European work, because uh, Europeans like images of Jesus. I kind of did that for Jesus. I am insulted for him. They still say, and said even then, that he has blonde hair and blue eyes, and he wasn't even Jewish. <laughs> so what was he? Was he Belgian? Hell oh, yes, he was nice Belgian. <laughs> I mean, he was Jewish, wasn't he? <laughs> He had beautiful black hair, probably beautiful black eyes, like so many Jews have. What a monstrous tradition it has been in the world to portray Jesus as this 
rather silly white man. <laughs> so I wanted to make uh, Jesus in a, in a more Jesus-like way than the European way. <laughs>